Hello, creepy people. It's Zero Gravity, the official ambassador of all the things that go bump in the night here at Big Go Belt Media. And I'm here with Kaya Roach Turner, the writer and director of that new movie that is guaranteed to make you itchy for the next three business days. We're talking <laughs> spiders, y'all. We're not playing around. Sting will be crawling its way into theaters on April 12th. And you guys, it is too much fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, so we're right in the middle of a horror renaissance right now, and the competition is super high. Sting was featured last week during AMC's Screen Unseen, and since then, I've been hearing the buzz pretty heavily from horror Twitter, so naturally, I just had to go and see for myself. Um, I had my first viewing last night, and I have many questions for you, my friend, so... Uh, without further ado, let's let's get into it. So the first thing that I have to ask is, I just have to know how this all started. Was it Spider first and Script second, or the other way around? Walk me through the process of the birth of this project. Spider first, hundred um, percent. I've always been terrified of spiders. I have like certified arachnophobia. Um, I live in Australia. So we have all of the worst things in, like all the giant sharks, all the poisonous snakes, um, and we've got spiders the size of dinner plates, some of which can kill you. And so I think it all started in a sandpit when I was two. I don't remember this, but I got bitten by a giant black spider, um, and I didn't get powers. I'm like, um, you know, um, Spider Man. <laughs> My only power is that I'm scared of spiders. So thank you very much. Um, uh, and 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 I made a movie out of it. So yeah, I was just sitting around like I'm a horror filmmaker. So my job is literally to think of the scariest things that could possibly happen to me and um, then put them into a screenplay. And like just the scariest thing that I could think of for a for a, for a creature feature was a giant spider the size of a you know jaguar biting you, incapacitating you, and then dragging you into an air conditioning duct, dragging you down into a basement and then eating you slowly over a period of days. And I was just like, yeah, that's a script, man. So I just, I was like, so, it, you know, let's set it in a single location to simplify things. It's all like, I love single location horror films. Like they're, they're kind of my favorite. It's just, um, there's nothing scarier than being trapped in a house with something horrible. Um uh, you know, I'm like, okay, let's just template my own family. So, you know, me and my wife had just had a baby. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the father of a, a beautiful stepdaughter who I love. And I'm just like, well, let's take that dynamic. Um, it, I wrote it during COVID. So it was like, it was a hard period. So I just took all of that stress, um, you know, sort of embodied it in this giant alien spider. And then, and then, you know, here we are. I love it. I love that you are on the the receiving end of arachnophobia because I have been talking to my friends about this one and and recommending it today actually and they say oh I don't do spiders but you don't mm. do spiders either and that's no. why this movie is so scary because you get it well some people like to be scared and, and I do I've always liked horror films like um I, I mean, one of the films that really affected me when I was a kid was arachnophobia. Now, I have arachnophobia and I still went and saw the film and I found it really hard. Um, like it was traumatizing, you know, and I think a lot of that stuff kind of made its way into my version of 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 the giant spider movie. You know, um, mm -hmm. even the John Goodman character and the Jermaine Fowler characters, like there's similarities in that they they both turn up as as kind of fun exterminators. Um, and so, yeah, that, that the DNA of that film is in this. And, you know, my my own fear of spiders is all the way through it. So it's one of the things that I knew. I just knew if I was going to direct a giant spider movie, it was going to be scary because mm -hmm. I have that fear myself. So I'm, all I'm doing is just communicating my own fears, you know. And man, let me tell you, it works. It works because this one was creepy as hell. All right. So Sting is... It really is a go big or go home type movie. And we're dealing with a giant flesh eating spider after all. So many of these scenes were completed with VFX, but we also have an awesome puppetry practical effects situation going on in the final acts. So how did you decide yeah. when you wanted to go digital, when you wanted to go practical? I only go digital if I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have to. To me, horror is a tactile medium. So like... Um, and I think audiences know the difference. Like there's that un uncanny valley thing that happens even with some of the best digital animation. You can just tell there's no weight to it sometimes, you know. Um, and so I I only decided to go digital um, when the spider was moving around in frame, like, and it's a wide shot. Um, and so when the spider's uh, 
very small, it's digital, or when the spider is big in frame crawling around the ceilings or around the walls or whatnot, Mm -hmm. like it had to be digital. Um, Mm -hmm. And everything else was practical because practical is scarier. It's just a fact, you know, and it's, I mean, I hate to use an example specifically, but if you look at I Am Legend, um, you know, they decided to go digital, I guess, for budget reasons or whatever, or I don't know what it was, but even the director came out and said he later regretted it because, you know, if you put somebody in a suit and they're running around and making faces, like it, it's a real thing in front of you. Whereas, you know, if you have a digital vampire, it's um, it's just not as scary. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, it's always about pushing to have the thing practically there on set because a giant spider the size of a bulldog can interact with the actors and the actors are actually sitting there freaking out as, you know, these legs are, you know, grabbing at them or, you know, the, the, there's scenes where the spider comes right up into, you know, Alila's face, into Charlotte's face and is hissing right in its face and she's reacting to a real puppet. So no acting is required. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I always push for practical. Um, I just I just think at the end of the day you get better results, you know. I would have to agree. Um, and I love the reference. Another New York car movie that I'm very fine, fond of. Um, I'm actually reporting to you live from a Brooklyn apartment right now. So I'm living in the horror myself. I, God hope I don't see a spider <laughs> anytime soon because I'm still living in the world of your film. Do you have any fond memories of the practical bits on set? Something like you just mentioned with legs and hissing and face and stuff. Anything that really sticks with you? Oh, there's always those moments where I'm just like, I'm looking, you know, there's that... I told you about that thing where, where, where it's hissing in 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 charlotte's face um like i mean i copied that from alien <laughs> i mean everybody knows what that is it's an alien thing with a giant mouth and saliva and you know smoke and rain everywhere i mean that's a ridley scott template you know and mm-hmm. um so to see the footage of that come through i'm like oh i'm making my own little alien movie i was so stoked um but i think my favorite moment was like there was a bit where the spider had to jump at Ryan and like, we're like, well, it's got to be digital because it's all in frame. And I think my producer came out and went, why don't we just chuck the puppet at him? And I'm like, come on, man. Like we're making a real movie here, not some B movie. And he goes, <laughs> dude, I think it can work. And I'm like, all right, let's try it both ways. And we threw the puppet at Ryan and it worked. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh, so you, you can just, it's not even puppeted. He literally just threw it at him and he goes, ah, and falls back. <laughs> And that's the shot you see. It's in the trailer. Like, it totally works. And so when oh, stuff awesome. like that, like, just real old school B-movie stuff, like, I love when that stuff works. The simplest, most obvious, stupid idea can sometimes be the best, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And you get that good, good reaction. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, well, yeah, it's right, a so- real reaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it definitely translates. Um, So you did mention that you did like the movie Arachnophobia, or maybe you didn't like it, but you're definitely intrigued by it. um, I I didn't like it in all the right ways, yeah. (laughs) Okay, makes total sense. Um, This Again, this is a spider movie, okay? I should be thinking about Arachnophobia or Eight-Legged Freaks, but really what I'm feeling a lot of with this one, I'm feeling a lot of gremlins, I'm feeling a lot of aliens, Predator, even weirdly a little bit of Terminator 2. Uh, So what were, I mean, now we know Alien, of course. What were your inspirations for this film? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, I grew up watching those movies. Like I I grew up in the 80s and I I sort of came um, into my own as an artist in the 90s. So all of my influences come from the 80s and a lot of my aesthetics come from the 90s. So, um, you know, I wanted to make... um, uh, something that echoed, yeah, like the, the the fun of Gremlins and even the fun of something like Jaws. Jaws is an adventure movie. Like it's not just scares. It's and it's you know there's there's a family heart to it and there's a sweetness to it in in the family scenes that I really Spielberg does that so well. You know that classic mm-hmm. American family, um, or it doesn't have to be American. It's just you know it's a it's a, be- a beautiful family unit going through tough times with a giant shark. Um, and, you know, mm-hmm. that's the Spielberg template, whether it's dinosaurs or sharks or even a giant truck, like, there's always that family element. And um, I wanted to do that kind of an 80s throwback, but I wanted to approach it with with the aesthetic almost of a 90s art film. You know, I wanted to make it like 
there's a bit of delicatessen in there. You know, there's a, that's a great French movie set in an apartment block, you know, that came out in the 90s. Um, but, you know, anytime I go into a film, I'm always templating pretty much the same things. Um, I'm, I'm trying to meld Jaws with John Carpenter's The Thing with Ridley Scott's Alien. So every time, every time, I just end up just copying those three, you know, when, whenever I make a horror film. So those, that's kind of what I'm trying to do, you know. I mean, hey, there's there's enough there where you can take those and use that as a, a guideline every time and still come out with something different. Every single time, the amount of of lore and, and uh, influence in those three heavy hitters, absolutely. So I want to go back to something that you said just now about your characters, about this kind of family dynamic. I fell in love with your zany cast of characters so easily. And it's crazy to say, I... I maybe that my favorite thing about this film isn't even the crazy huge spider that's a hard second but i yeah, wow. fell in love with your zany cast of characters they are so so good and so i know that the screenplay is yours you directed and and uh writ this one um yeah but how hands-on were you with the casting process um because it it all comes together. Cast is amazing the dialogue just fits perfectly how much did you have to do with that? Well, first of all, thank you for saying that. It may be the nicest compliment I've gotten so far on anything. Like, you know, it's the hardest thing in a screenplay is to set up real or interesting characters that people care about. And that's the thing with a horror film is, you know, effectively you're setting up a thing where there's a smorgasbord of people who are going to die and be hurt and maimed and then there's a core bunch who are probably going to survive. Everybody knows the template. But, like, you know, you have to get somebody to care about everybody in the film in like 20 minutes like it's really difficult mm. like you know and um so that that was yeah that 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 was hard um to to get right in the screenplay um and to to, to hear you say that means that we might have succeeded a little bit which is which is fantastic um because nobody you just don't want to end up with like a a, a gore fest of just people who you don't care about dying mm -hmm. like i mean that's just a that's a horrible thing um the casting process was relatively easy um you know, I keep saying, you know, people are like, oh, where did you find Alila? And and it's like, I mean, she's such an amazing actor. You know, she was 12, just turning 13 at the time. And she's one of the most professional, phenomenally talented, like, actors I've ever worked with. Um, I just, I couldn't believe how good she was and how lucky we were that she was elevating our film so much. And the rest of the cast, I, again, I'm lucky in that, you know, I work in Australia. We shot this in Sydney in a small studio and just recreated New York, like, on, on the soundstage. Um, but because, uh, you know, I work as an indie filmmaker in, in this country, I kind of get access to just some of the best actors in, in, in the country. And if they're available, they usually say yes, you know, because there's only so many films made. And, you know, if they like the script and, you know, they, they think I'm not an idiot, um, then they'll probably <laughs> say yes. So, you know, the, the, the cast is, they're all amazing every single one of them. And, um, you know, we, 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 we were lucky enough to, to get Jermaine, who is a native New Yorker himself. He, you know, he, he grew up in Brooklyn. And so, every, you know, he was like my bellwether. I'd take him aside and go, does this look like New York? And he's like, yeah, man, mostly. And so he, he was the only one with a genuine accent. So, um, yeah, I, I loved working with him so much. I'm actually trying to develop something with him at the moment. I really hope. Oh, you know, awesome. Um, I can't talk about it. It's very okay. hush hush, but um, um, I'm very excited to work with him again. He's he's really one of my favorite people, you know. That sounds great. Well, whenever that announcement comes, I will be waiting very patiently. Um, so <laughs> yes. one last thing. We talked about Jaws. We talked about Aliens. There was one other um, film that you mentioned. Um, it was maybe like a French one. Um, Delicatessen, but... yes. Yes, yes. It's Delicatessen. It's by uh, Jeunet... It Caro, Jean Junet, I think was his name, the director. They did a series mm. of films. They did City of Lost Children and Delicatessen. And um, he actually made Alien 4 and then later mm. made a, a very popular French film called Amelie. And he's a wonderful mm. director. But, yeah, one of his first films, I think if not his first, was, yeah, this, this, this weird post-apocalyptic um, uh, film called Delicatessen set in... Um, uh, a single apartment block with a bunch of zany characters. And so I, I loved that film back in the 90s. And um, uh, I, I was very much in, in, influenced by that, you know. Awesome. I'm definitely going to have to add that one to the list. But is it mm. safe to say that watching these three movies uh, could get you in in the mood to get ready to ingest what will be staying as, as far as homework goes for the horror heads out there? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, anytime you can get people to go back and watch some of the classics, like, oh, please mm -hmm. do, you know, they're so good. And we get lost in all the noise. We forget that some of the greatest films were made, you know, in the 80s and 90s. You know, to go back and watch them, they're, they're fantastic. And if you're a horror fan and you haven't seen Alien, go watch Alien immediately. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, like we were very much influenced by, you know, the stuff that Blumhouse and A24 have been doing in the last, you know, half decade or decade or how, however long it's been. They they have just such a beautiful aesthetic and I really wanted to make something in that. You know, the, the expression elevated horror is overused, but I know what they mean. You know, what they mean is just well-made horror, basically. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to try and do that. We wanted to make something that that was a step above, uh, you know, like a schlocky approach, you know, and that's why we spent yeah. so much time on the, the human element and the aesthetics and, you know, um, all of that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, it's got the heart of the schlock, but then you come in very surprised with very intricate cinematography, great characters, great performances. I think it's just going to be a hit and it's it's going to be, you know, a cult classic for years with uh, with the horror heads, if, if I can put my slight prediction. But that's all I have for you today. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. For everyone who can handle the heat, out there. Make sure you catch Sting in theaters starting April 12th. And as always, I've been Zero Gravity. Thank you so much for watching.